Thank you for having me. Um, I am Tony. Luann is sick yesterday and today, so conveniently she's not here when we're doing this webinar. No, I'm just kidding. She's she always likes the spotlight. So, but you just get me today. So sorry about that. Um, like Phyllis and Nancy said, um, I am a high school comprehensive high school teacher in Oklahoma and we have ninth through 12th grade students. And so I'm just gonna talk to you about what we do and what we've gained from different conferences that we've been to and the stuff that we use. So maybe that some of this stuff can help you. So I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, this is my 10th year teaching. I was um, a labor and delivery nurse for 16 years before I started teaching. And I have two girls in high school and one little boy in fourth grade. And when they got in school, I decided I wanted a schedule that mirrored theirs. So I started teaching and I absolutely love it now. And so Luann also has a medical background. She, the, she's in her 20th year of teaching and she spent 18 years as a medical technologist in the lab at the hospital here in Durant. So we both have different um, medical backgrounds. So I think that helps us when we're teaching together because we can kind of help each other with different aspects of that. So we're, we're a pretty good team. I don't know what I would do without her. So today's objectives, I'm gonna to talk to you about how we integrate the anatomy and clay learning system, how we use interactive notebooks in our classroom, how we integrate HOSA in our weekly lesson plans and how we use um, different partners um, such as the Nishi curriculum enhancements, the Dean Vaughn retention system and precision exams in our classrooms. So this first slide here or the next slide here is about our anatomy and clay learning system. So we purchased 50 skeletons originally in our classroom through a grant that we wrote from Oklahoma Career Tech. And if you guys are not from Oklahoma, I don't know if your Career Tech programs have um, similar grants, but Oklahoma Career Tech has a grant uh, every year that you can apply for. And so we wrote this grant to buy these skeletons and it was super easy because if you go to the Anatomy and Clay website, all I did was copy and paste their information into that grant proposal and we got um, $15,000 to purchase these skeletons and to send us to a workshop. So we bought the skeletons the first year, we shared them and we had two students to a half because you can, they come as a whole but you can split them in a half. As you can see, Luann's here is a half. So each pair had a half. Um, we attended this workshop in Phoenix, and if you use this anatomy and clay and you've never been to a workshop, these workshops are amazing. Um, Brandy Gillum was our um, instructor. You can see her in the background here. She was amazing, but let me tell you, it is an intense two-day workshop. I mean, from eight to five, for those two days, you build every body system, and I mean, we had so much information that we brought back from there. It was amazing. So those are great workshops to go to. Um, the next year we got another grant to buy more skeletons. And then this past summer we wrote another grant to get 25 of the Torsicans. So I'll show you those in just a minute. But Luann teaches freshmen and the, the whole skeletons were a little much for the freshmen. Um, so we decided, she decided she wasn't going to use those anymore and we went back to um, the Starla method that just has like the paper cutouts and I'll talk about those in just a second too. But um, then these Torsicans came out and so she wrote a grant and got 25 of those for her classrooms. So this is kind of how we store them in our classrooms. We bought these little shelves and we have bungee cords across here keeping them safe and so each student now gets a half of a skeleton in my classrooms. Um, I have sophomores through seniors. So my health science two classrooms are, um, th that's my foundations of anatomy and physiology and medical terminology. So this is the class that I use that in. And the students adopt their skeletons, give them a name, and then as we go through each body system, they work on them. So when we go through the skeletal system, they're writing with pencils on the bones, labeling the bones. And then when we get to the muscular system, we build the muscular system on there and we just keep adding each system as we go to the skeleton. So here are some pictures of my classroom. Um, this is them working on their skeletons. So 
like I said, we teach in a comprehensive high school. So I use this particular CD that comes with it. Um, this one, we only build, like for instance, when we do the muscular system, we only build about nine muscles. Um, I don't have time to build every muscle. Um, although when you buy the system, you get two different um, DVDs. You get a DVD that has every muscle that you could possibly build on here. And then you have a shortened version. Um, if you don't like the ones that they have in the shortened version, you can always pull up the Atlas and it will show you how to build the other ones. Um, but it's very simple to use. You just put in the CD and I put it in, on my whiteboard and I just, we just um, build the body systems as we go and you can pause it. So we'll watch how to build it, how to build the muscle and then we'll put it on there and then go to the next muscle and how to build it. So this one is just the basics. If you, if you don't have enough time to build every muscle or every, you know, everything in each system. And then he, the students are tested on the information that, that we learn in each one, in each body system. So after we take notes on a body system, then we uh, build that body system with the anatomy and clay. Um, this is just an example of what information is on the videos. So it, it's a good learning experience too. Um, here are my students at the end of the year last year. So this is what their skeletons look like when they've got all of the body systems on there. So they're pretty proud of them. Um, this is kind of what Luann did in her freshman class. Um, if uh, she decided not to use the skeletons and even if you don't have skeletons, you can get the clay. And so this is how she does it. She did it with hers before she started using her torsican. She would just build, like, this is the heart and the circulation and stuff like that. And she would just build it on these little mats and then they would put it in their um, Ziploc baggies and then they would be tested on it because she could put little dissection pins in here and say, you know, you can buy the hands-on body system diagram for like $15 and it has all of the body systems and it's basically just on a piece of paper and we laminate those so that the clay doesn't stick to the paper and so we used those for a, a long time before we actually got the skeletons. So if you don't have the skeletons in your classroom you can go to Starla's website and buy that for $15 and those are great because you can make as many copies as you need and you can laminate them and they last for quite some time. Also the torsicans are much uh, less expensive than the skeletons are so that's another option. Um, this is an example of what the torsicans look like and I'll show you a live picture when we finish the um, slideshow but these are the torsican models and they're new this year. So this is what Luann uses this year with her freshmen because it's much less, um, A, they're cheaper, they're not as fragile, so they, they do better with these than they, do this, than they did the skeletons. Um, so that's all that, we, that I'm gonna tell you for now about the, interact, I mean, about the anatomy and clay. So if you have any questions when we get finished with the slideshow, just put them in the chat and I'll try to answer as many as I can. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the interactive notebooks. So um, I started using interactive notebooks about five years ago and I love it. Now I've, I've tweaked it a bit every year. So I mainly use this for my Health Science 2 class, my um, Foundations of AMP and Med term. And Luann uses a different uh, style for her freshmen, and then I use a different style for my Health Science 3 and 4, which is my Health Professions and my Capstone course. So for Health Science 2, I have them get a five-subject notebook, and on the very first page is their author's page. So they put their name and their class hour, and they decorate it with, you know, stuff that they like. The next eight pages are their table of contents. So on their table of contents, we have a column for the um, page number, a column for the title of our notes for that day, and then the date. And so I have them number their pages to 200. So on the left side is always odd, the right side's always even. Um, so, like I said, in 
health science one, she does hers a bit differently than I do. Um, she puts lots of information in hers that she just has them copy down either off the board or off of her document camera, stuff like that. Um, I like to use guided note taking when I lecture. So because I don't know, I just feel like the kids are way more engaged if they're writing down what I'm writing down. Plus that keeps me on track. I teach the same class three different times during the day. So if I'm I'm guiding myself as much as I'm guiding them and um, it keeps me on track. It makes sure I've mentioned the same topics in all three hours of the class. So I use a bundle that I got from Teachers Pay Teachers and it's from amybrownscience.com and it fits so well with my foundations of anatomy and physiology and medical terminology. So and um, that's one of the things you can buy it and it's like $60 on there, but it's a digital download. So anytime she has updates to it, it's automatically updated. So I printed off a teacher copy and my copy and I have my teacher's notebook up here as I'm writing, as I'm lecturing and stuff. So I think that's wonderful. This is a picture of it. So this is kind of like these, they come in half pages, like the, the, side that I, this is the teacher copy. The student copy will have this same thing on both sides. So I make copies, I'm saving paper because I use half as many copies and I cut it in half. And so these are really easy to tape on their, in their interactive notebooks and we have kind of stagger them so they can flip through easy. We usually do two to three pages a day depending on how much content we're going to cover. So like if this was an example of something, I have this under my document camera that they can see on my whiteboard. And so um, this day was development of bones. So we're talking about the skeletal system. And um, one of these says define calcification. So we'll write the definition of calcification up here and we'll talk about calcification. So they're copying down what I'm writing as we talk about it. And I write it new three times instead of just writing it out ahead of time. For one, I think as I'm writing it, I'm saying it. So they're hearing it and they're writing it. And then we stop and talk. Um, before I tried writing it out ahead of time and they weren't listening to me when I was talking about this because they're trying to copy down the whole page instead of just copying down as I write it. So I started, I mean, it's more work for me. It's more handwriting, but I think it works much better like that. So I'm very structured um, and my kids love that, that because they, they like structure, whether they want to admit it or not. So every day we have these papers, however many papers that we need for that day, they're at the front of the classroom in a little tray. They come into class, they get their papers they get their notebooks, they add them to the table of contents. And if you can see up here, it says concept covered. This is on there every day. So in their table of contents, they would put um, development of bone and organization of the body. So those are their two titles for that day. And they know that they're supposed to have their notebook out, their papers ready, this already in the table of contents and opened up and ready to go by the time I get into class. So I think that teaches them some responsibility, some, you know, they need to have their stuff together because I tell them I want them waiting on me. I'm not going to wait on them. So they get into a pretty good routine. I have it written on the board, you know, how many papers we have that day, what their title are. So um, they know what we're doing when we, when they come into class. And I didn't realize it until this year. I had to have my gallbladder taken out right after school was out. So I missed several days. And when I came back, they were like, Miss Mac, are we doing our regular stuff? Like they were so like out of sorts because we weren't in our, they weren't in their routine while I was out. So they really do like that routine, whether they like to admit it or not. So after we take notes and um, the last 10 to 15 minutes of class, we have reflection time. So they cannot talk. They have to reflect the entire time. So I let them put their notebooks up three minutes before the bell rings just so they can have time to put their notebooks up because we keep those in class. So I have some totes that they keep their notebooks in. And the reflection time, they can rewrite what we took notes on. They can draw pictures of what we talked about. Um, 
just pretty much reflecting. So if, and they have to cover the whole page and I like for them to use color. Now, some of them don't use color, especially the boys. They may not like to use color, but you know, the girls will write in bubble letters. And as long as the boys are rewriting what they've written, I'm okay with that because they've heard me say it. They've written it down. They've rewritten it in their own words, and now they've probably had to reread re it because, you know, 10 to 15 minutes is a long time if you're rereading over some stuff. So I make them use the entire page. Um, something that I forgot to mention yesterday is I make them grade their own notebooks. So after each chapter test, they get a test grade also for their notebooks. So they have... They have to take off five points if their reflection page is in an entire page. They take off five points for each note, uh, lecture notes that they don't have in their notebook. They take off five points if their table of contents is not up to date, and then they will grade themselves on that based on each, after each chapter. So I have some examples, and these are excellent examples of reflection pages. Now, not everybody's, uh, actually very few of them look like this, but this is an example of a really good one. So this day we were talking about blood types apparently because she's got ABO and then she's drawn the rhesus monkey here because the RH factor was named after the rhesus monkey. Um, this one looks like it's talking about um, the five senses. And then this one looks like it's about the endocrine system. So, I mean, if they're writing, rewriting information that we talked about in class, that's basically what I'm wanting them to do. So I'm wanting them to think about what we talked about and reread it and rewrite it in their own words. Um, so the students are tested at the end of each body system and I let them use their notebooks to find the answers. Um, in our day and age, these kids have a hard time looking stuff up in books, which is why I make them do the table of contents. Um, they will say that once they get in the groove and the reflections, I will say, get better as the school year goes over. At the beginning of the year, I may have to say, okay, um, maybe answer these questions, find these questions that we talked about and rewrite them. So, at the beginning, I give them some ideas on how to reflect, and then as the year goes on, they do great about their reflections get better and better. Um, so most of the time when they're using their notebook to find the answers on their test, they have said that most of the time they can find the answers faster on their reflection pages than they can on their lecture notes. And it's the same information, but they've drawn pictures to catch their attention, or they've written it in their own words, or whatever the case may be, they say that they find their answers most of the time on the reflection pages than they do on the note pages. So I think that those reflections are very good. Also, it's kind of like an exit ticket for me. I walk around the room while they're doing their reflections and I can see if they're getting what we talked about or not just by how the reflection is going. If they're not knowing what to write on that reflection, I ask them questions to see if they know what's going on or what we talked about. So if they don't, I can reinforce individually with them at, during that reflection time. Um, another aspect of this class is medical terminology. So like I said, we have a five subject notebook. The last subject is all of our medical terminology. So it's kind of like a glossary in the back of their notebook. Um, so anything we write down or crossword puzzles or anything like that that we do for medical terminology goes in the back. And I try to make medical terminology fun, um, which is sometimes hard, but we do crossword puzzles. We play um, medical terminology bingo. We play Jeopardy games. We play, we just try to play lots of games and it gets very competitive and very loud in here. I got evaluated one time when we were playing medical terminology bingo and it was so loud, my evaluator got up and left because she was like, this is crazy, they're so loud. But they were so into it and I thought it was awesome. And I think she did too, she was just like, oh, I'll just come back another day. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So. Anyway, sometimes we, I mean, I'm super competitive, so maybe that's why I didn't think it was a big deal. Um, before I talk about the enhancements, I want to talk about another thing that I don't have in here um, because it's new to me this year. So one of the things that I wrote in my grant this year was the Dean Vaughn retention system. 
Um, I bought the A&P bundle and then I bought the medical term uh, bundle. And what it is, it's a video series. So you have a video for each chapter. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you, when I first bought it, I was like, oh my gosh, why have I spent all this money on this? It, this is crazy. Because it is a little different, but it really does work. So don't be... Uh, don't be a negative Nelly like I was at the beginning and just kind of roll with it. I show I showed it to my kids anyway. And it, so it kind of uses like word association. So for example, for cranium, they have a crane on a skull is for cranium. And so it takes a little, it's, it's kind of um, cartoonish. And so it's, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but the kids actually remember so much from those videos. So I have no doubt now that it works. It's just a little bit different. So just hang in there, but you'll see the results. Now, one of the things that I am going to do different, we did the A&P in the fall and in the spring, we're going to do the medical terminology in the workbook that comes with it. Um, in the, in the fall, I just gave each student their workbook. In the spring, I'm going to tear out the pages for each chapter individually because in the workbook, it has the answers and then the, uh, the workbook pages. And as the video states, it wants them to write down the words as it's saying it, as it's on the screen. And so I'll, some of my kids didn't get as much out of it because they were just looking in the notebook and copying it down and they weren't really listening to the videos. So I'm going to do it different in the spring. I mean, each student will still have a workbook, but I'm going to tear out the pages that they actually have to write. And so they actually have to listen to the video and write them down. So it really does work. So if you've ever watched it for a minute and you're like, oh my gosh, no, this is not for you know, my age kids. I thought the same thing, but I went ahead with it because I, I'd already, you know, purchased the stuff, but it really does work. So just hang in there with it. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is the National Consortium Curriculum Enhancement. So um, I got this this year also. Um, this is, this first slide just tells you kind of about, I just copied this off of the website, the Nishi website. So in this, there is lots of good information. I mean, I've already used a ton of it and I just got it this summer. So, I mean, I've used so much that just the first semester. So there's PowerPoints for each standard that you can edit. Um, there's higher level instructional activities. There's super fun activities. Um, there's assessments that are already made, there's checklists, there's rubrics, um, and everything is aligned with the national health standards. So this flash drive is well worth the money. And like um, I said, I bought this in the grant that I wrote this past year. So grants are awesome. They're super easy to write. I was scared of them at first, but really all you have to do is whatever you're wanting to buy, go to that website and you can just pretty much copy and paste everything that you need onto your grant proposal. So this is an example of one of the activities that my kids loved from the curriculum enhancements. So our very first chapter of the year, we talk about body planes, quadrants, sections, um, segments, stuff like that that so we had talked about that and then they have this activity and the it's just got directions so it doesn't give them anything you know else it just says get a partner trace your partner with chalk so like I said I have three different hours we went to the front porch of the school for one hour the back porch for the other and by the tennis courts for the uh, the last one and they had to draw the segments or the regions or the quadrants on each other's uh, chalk outline. It was so cool. It took almost the entire hour. The kids loved it. They were helping each other. They were like, no, 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 this is your mid sagittal, blah, blah, blah. So it was very good. The kids loved it. They were engaged. Um, the administrators again came out and they were like, what are y'all doing? You're chalking up our sidewalk. But it was really funny because people were like, you know, uh, our resource officer is a police officer and he was like, oh, I need to use some of this on my stuff. So the kids loved it because they asked, people asked them about it all day long. So this was a great one that was in there. Another one that we did for my health science three class, which is my health professions. 
when we talk about the Hippocratic Oath and ethics, um, there's an activity on there where they make a code of ethics for their clinical rotation. So they made a code of ethics for each um, clinical rotation group. And the one on the right, the picture on the right, is a test about cultural sensitivity. So this one was very um, interesting because, you know, we talked about, you know, different morals, different races, different cultures having different beliefs and that we shouldn't judge and all this kind of stuff. And so everybody's like, yeah, I know, you know, I'm culturally sensitive. But then when you take this test, you're kind of like, oh, my gosh. And so I gave it to some of my coworkers and they were it, it really gets you to thinking. So there's some very good activities on that flash drive. Um, so the next thing is HOSA. So we love HOSA at Durant High School. Um, every Friday is HOSA Friday in my classes and Luann's classes. Um, all students participate in HOSA Friday, whether they are HOSA members or they're not, because it's not required because we're a comprehensive high school. We have some kids that are just in there as an elective. They're not necessarily on a pathway to finish, you know, to get a certificate of something. They're, they're just in there because A, they it's just an elective or B, they didn't even want to be in here and they just got stuck in here. But every student participates in Host of Friday because, I mean, they all need to learn something about their health. So Luann and I do this a little bit differently with her freshman. She uses the healthcare issues exam guidelines. And if you go to those guidelines, there's links on there to like USA Today Health, um, CNN Health. So they click on those. And there's some mini articles. There's lots of mini articles on there. So they read five articles and write five facts about each article. Um, in my class, the students that are not in HOSA will do a mini research paper over the trending healthcare topic of the day. So oh, my lights go off when my thing's out. So um, each uh, student, I'll pull up a health topic from the day and it, I mean, from the week and it, we've done a lot over jeweling, over marijuana, over oxygen bars, over running marathons, whatever, whatever the health topic is that I see on the internet that week. And they'll have to do a little mini research paper over it. Um, if my students are in, or both of our students are in HOSA, they're going to study or work on their HOSA event. So every Friday. And we start that at the beginning of the year. Um, we start school around mid-August. And so by the end of September, they have to have their dues paid and they have to have their HOSA event picked. So um, they work, they study on there for their HOSA event a long time before we test. Usually we test around the end of February and our state conference is in April. So, um, like I said, Luann has freshmen. She makes her students turn in 25 facts about her events every Friday. Um, the older kids I have, and um, they, I can pretty much give them a task and they do it. So, I walk around on those Fridays, help them with their events, or if they're not studying, I know they're not studying and I can get them back on track. So, here's an example of our um, Host of Friday research paper for those non-HOSA members. Um, I give them their topic and they have to write a one page paper in their interactive notebook over the topic. And then here's, you know, some things that I want them to cover in their essay. Um, the definition, pros and cons, is it healthy, is it beneficial, is it as good as marketed, would you do it, why or why not. Um, and I stress to them the importance of English, grammar, spelling, stuff like that in healthcare. Um, or in anything really, but especially in healthcare. So, you know, coming from a uh, hospital nurse, uh, there was some times where, you know, our charting was, uh, if there was like a sentinel event, you know, even if you're not taking care of the patient, you still get called in on the deposition. And whether you did something or not, if you can, if you can't write well or, spell well or form a complete sentence like they're gonna rip you to shreds so i try to stress to them the importance of writing and these research process uh, papers that we do just help that so we average around 85 members in our hosa um, organization 
Um, we have about 50 that advance to state and we average about 15 that go to um, international conference. So uh, we, we're one of the largest organizations at our high school. So we don't have to do a lot of recruitment, but we work our rookie camp every year, which is our freshman orientation. And my students are in their official uniform and they talk to the incoming freshmen about HOSA, what they can do, um, what it's done for them, all that kind of stuff. So um, here are some pictures of our uh, group that we took to Disney World this past year. So these, this is my, most of my group. There were a couple missing. Um, this is one of my daughters. So she's a junior this year. She competed in sports medicine last year at ILC. And then this is my other daughter who's uh, a freshman this year, but she can Competed in the middle school division of health career display and her and her partner Addison um, got third place at ILC this year. So I was super proud of them. Um, this one I want to point out to you, um, the National Consortium hosts uh, precision exams every year at ILC. Um, precision exams is also at the National Consortium uh, uh, conferences. So I use precision exams. I love it. I make my kids um, go to this certificate lab at ILC. Um, the past two years, I've made them do that. And so we've come away with several free certifications from this from the precision exams. Um, Brady, this is my oldest. She passed her CNA certification while we were there. I had several others um, take some in nutrition and wellness. Um, I had these two middle schoolers take the um, 21st century success skills while we were there. They passed those. So there's lots of good um, exams there. Also, if you attend the um, National Consortium Conference as a teacher, I did this last year when we went to Denver, um, before we started using precision exams, and you can take the exams. Robbie is a good uh, person at precision exams to work with. He made fun of me because I took about 15 uh, exams while we were in Denver last year. Um, so those are very good to see which ones fit with your classes. So that's good to do. So if you attend, and I highly recommend that you attend the National Consortium Conferences. I went to St. Louis this year and Denver last year, and it is by far the best conference I've ever been to. And I'm not just saying that because Nancy and Phyllis paid me, although if they want to, they can later. No, just kidding. Um, so these are great conferences. So if you have not been to one, they're very good. Um, so you can check these out at ILC the certificate lab if you're there this summer in Houston also. So that's the end of my slideshow. So I'll leave this up here for a second. If here's my email, tony.mclemore at durantisd.org. So if you have any questions or if you need, want me to email you anything, I'll share whatever because I think we should all share things. That helps us all out. Oh, another thing, I forgot to say this till the end um, yesterday too. And Nancy shared this on the National Consortium Facebook page. Another cool activity that we do when we talk about the nervous system is I get white balloons. And we're talking about the lobes of the brain. I give the students lots of markers and they have to draw each lobe in a different color. And then they have to um, write on those lobes or draw pictures of things that happen within that lobe. So, for instance, um, you know, vision comes from what lobe? They have to figure that out and put that on there. So she shared that activity on the Facebook page, and I couldn't remember where we got it. I stole it from last time, but I stole it from Robbie. And so she's got that activity on Facebook, so you can go to the National Consortium Facebook page and find that. And I'm going to stop sharing this so I, you guys, I can show you guys some stuff, and I'm going to have to turn my lights back on, so it'll take me just a second. Okay, my lights are back on now. So I just wanted to show you a couple of things. So here is one of my skeletons. So, so far we've just built these nine muscles that are on here. And I don't know if you can see close enough, but like they've labeled the bones on there. So this is an example of our skeletons. So here is a, an example of the torsicans. Like I said, they're much smaller. 
Um, I think these are around 150 a piece. The skeletons for a school full skeleton is about 450. And if you go to Starla's and you just get the diagrams, those are like $15. So if you want to use any of those, there's different prices. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so the first question on the chat says, tell us about your recruitment strategies for your program. So we're comprehensive high school. We don't recruit a lot. Um, we do go to, we have, like I said, we have the rookie camp, which is our incoming freshmen. We do that in the summertime before school starts. Um, we kind of talked to them that day about joining HOSA. We talk to them at the end of their eighth grade year when we do enrollment at the end of the year. And so when we talk to them about enrolling, we tell them what courses are available. We have Health Science 1, which is for freshmen. And um, then we have Health Science 2, 3, and 4. They have to have two to go into three, which is our health professions. And then they have to have three to go into four, which is our capstone. So there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of recruitment, I guess. Um, we're like I said, we have a pretty good reputation now. So kids that are in healthcare, we're in the community a lot, so people see us, and so they they want to be in our classes just because we're out in the community so much. We're kind of a small town, so there's not a whole lot of recruitment. Um, our class periods are 45 minutes long. So that's why I kind of do an abbreviated version of the anatomy and clay because there's no way we could do all of everybody's system. I mean, we just, we couldn't fit it in. Um, the next question, can I share my PowerPoint? Yes. So I will get with Nancy and Phyllis and, and we can figure out how to share that. Um, let's see. How do I, the next question, how do you, convince your administration to support your travel to the National Health Science Conference. So um, our program funds can help with that. And also I write it into the grant that I write. So that helps with that too. There's also a, um, I believe that there is a paper on the National Consortium that tells all the benefits of going to these and it's, you can use it as a professional development. So I think that that, helps them also. Um, let's see. Where can you buy the national, the curriculum enhancements? I believe that you can buy those on the website, the National Consortium of Health Science Education website. Um, can I repeat the website I referenced on the real diagrams? Yes. So starlasteachingtips.com. S-T-A-R-L-A at starlasteachingtips.com. And if you um, search for the hands-on body systems diagrams, they're like 1497. Um, how do we afford 13 people to ILC? Well, we've taken up to 24 people to ILC before. And it's, it is expensive. We do um, several fundraisers a year. We do different ones. We have a 5K sometimes that makes pretty good money. We usually make around five to $7,000 um, for that. Um, another good fundraiser that we do is we um, do sponsors. So each um, HOSA student is um, supposed to get a hundred dollar sponsor so it can be a business it can be their parents it can be their grandparents um, but they get a hundred dollar sponsor and then we put all of the sponsors on the back of their hosta shirts so every year we have a hosta shirt that they get as part of their dues and we put that those names on the back so we we've had anywhere up to you know 65 sponsors before not every student gets one um, but if they get one, then their name goes on the back. If the students help with the fundraisers, then they get money from our HOSA account when, if they make it to ILC. So usually the students have to pay around, like last year to Disney World, we flew, obviously, because we're in Oklahoma. And um, so with the flight, with the registration, with the hotel, 
with their Disney World tickets, most the most that they paid were three hundred dollars if they worked the fundraisers. Now, if they didn't work them, they could have been up to you know twelve hundred dollars. So they're responsible for part of it, and then we try to raise as much funds as we can on for the for their uh, for the HOSA chapter. Um. Yeah, so Nancy said the webinar will be posted to the Nishi website along with the slides. Um, the enhancements are the same as last year, but Nancy told us yesterday that next year or this summer, I believe, I think she'll mention that at the end, they're going to come up with an updated one. And then, okay, so somebody said Starla has the laminated diagrams that you purchased. Okay, so we got ours a long time ago. We laminated ourselves but so now they come laminated um yes so my textbook this is the textbook that i use in my foundations of anatomy and physiology and medical terminology i mean it says introduction to medical terminology but it this is by goodhart wilcox and i love this one this one's new to me this year it's got a lot of anatomy because before i had a foundations of amp book and a medical terminology book. And this one is a very good combo book. There's lots of um, student, really you don't need a workbook with this one because there's work, there's lots of workbook pages at the end of, the, of each chapter. So this saves me money because I don't have to buy workbooks every year because there's lots of student activities at the end of each chapter. Um, for my health, health professions class, I use the DHO, the Diversified Health Op Occupations. And then I use the Professional Medical Assistant by F.A. Davis. So I kind of use a combo in that one because my students take the medical assisting. They do a phlebotomy, they do a clinical lab tech, and they take the CNA from precision exams. So we do several different certifications for them. And they use those from precision exams. My Health Science 2 kids take the Health Science Fundamentals from precision exams. And then Luann gives her freshmen the preparing for college and careers in the 21st century success skills to her freshmen. So that's all I have. Do I have any more questions? That was that was wonderful, Tony. I I, I know I enjoy. I, I watched yesterday and I learned some new things today that maybe you didn't say yesterday. So so I'm glad I watched both days. Um, I think Nancy wants to share a little bit about some of the questions, maybe a little bit more detail about the enhancements and a few things like that. Yes. But we sure appreciate all you did. It was wonderful, and I told her she could be on the radio. She had a great voice. So, uh, Nancy, <laughs> do you, you. want to do you want to share about that? Sure, I'll be happy to. So, um, obviously, it appears that we paid Tony, but we didn't, and she was totally <laughs> unprompted when she said such nice things about um, the services provided by the consortium. So, we, um, we just probably owe her a dinner or a drink or something for um, all that she That's did okay. to, to um, <laughs> make us look good, make us all look good. Uh, as far as the health science enhancements, um, those have been around for about nine to 10 years, and they've been updated a couple of times. The last refresh was um, in 2017, and it really involved more of um, some corrections, some making sure the test questions answers were correct, um, not a major refresh. And so um, we had gotten so many um, compliments about them that we had written or we had revised the National Health Science Standards in May of 2019, not major revisions, but, but some revisions. And we felt like it was important that the enhancements were in sync with the new standards. And so we are in the process of selecting a contractor that will be uh, revising these um, enhancements and um, adding more activities, more engagement, probably more technology to them. And the plan is that they will be ready for August of 2020. So for next, for the upcoming school year, the plan is that we'll have the enhancements ready for purchase. There will probably be a slight increase in the cost just because they haven't um, inflation and they haven't uh, had a price change. And so there'll be probably a slight increase, but there's a member uh, discount. So if your state is a member, of the Health Science Consortium, then there's a, a significant 
um, discount to teachers for, for our resources. So look, look for announcements about the National Health Science Enhancements and, the, and those, um, that new edition that'll be out in about eight months. Also, I wanted to mention the teacher organization. Um, we launched this about a year and a half ago, the Health Science Educators Association, and um, we currently are approaching um, about 300 members. There's a um, $45 annual fee to join um, this association. There are unique re resources that are available to those members of this association, as well as a voice at the National Health Science um, consortium because you, you have a representative, a category representative on our board. And so we get to hear from down to the classroom level what you what your needs are, how the um, consortium can be of, of value to you down to the classroom level. So um, there's information at Health Science Consortium, our website, about joining this association. And we hope you'll look into that and um, create another community of people for you to network with and um, let us hear from you. And then lastly, I just wanted to mention about the 2020 National Health Science Conference. We'll be in lovely Charleston, South Carolina, which is a number one tourist attraction in our nation. And we'll be at the Charleston Marriott. We don't anticipate um, that the registration fees will go up. All the uh, registration um, information will go live on our website the second week in February. The dates are there now, October the um, 27th is the pre-conference. And then the full conference is Wednesday, Thursday, and half day on Friday, which is October the 27th through the 30th. And um, as Tony mentioned, we do publish, and we will publish again this year, a letter of support or a letter of justification that where you can go in and um, fill in your information and present that to your administrators about how this is an investment in you as a classroom teacher to come back and, and bring um, best practices and all that you've learned at the conference. So we hope you will join us here in South Carolina. That's where I office out of. And I'm here to tell you that Charleston is a great city and um, be a great place for you to um, come and um, find ways to build your quality health science education programs. Tony mentioned the brain activity with the balloon. I did reshare that. It had been shared in late um, 2018, and I reshared that, and you have an opportunity to go there and put your email address in, and then uh, we will uh, compile all that and send you the lesson plan that goes along with that balloon brain activity that Tony said she stole from Robbie Rousey, who uh, does um, activities in a pinch and is a great partner for the consortium. I look for this um, webinar to be, um, re it's been recorded. It'll be posted our, on our website. We're gonna post yesterday's as well as today's. And Tony's given us permission to use her um, slides um, for your reference. And so, um, We'll have them there in a separate file for you as well. There's a link under events, a, a special page just for webinars. And so give us, give us a few days, but hopefully that'll be up um, by the end of the month for sure. With that, um, thank you again, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Tony, so much for um, mentioning all of our partners. She mentioned Goodhart Wilcox, Dean Vaughn um, Retention, she mentioned Anatomy and Clay, HOSA, Precision Exams, F.A. Davis, and Cengage, and Starla's Teaching Tips. So um, they'll be thrilled to know that those resources are impacting what you do in the classroom as well. Thank you, everyone. We look forward to um, staying connected with you. There'll be another webinar in February, also from a classroom teacher. And so we have your contact information now that you've registered, and we'll get um, those announcements back out to you. Have a great rest of your Wednesday, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Please share the other information with people that you know that might want to be a part of our next webinar when that webinar information comes out. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Thank you.